Now, this is a moment here at the World Summit AI 2017 that we're going to open up the stage to a very special, unique, and interesting conversation. I'm pleased to say that for this moment, we have Roya Mahboub, the CEO of Digital Citizen Fund, sharing her thoughts with Sarah Porter, the co-founder of World Summit AI and CEO and founder of Inspired Minds for this session. Now, Roya and Sarah are two women who have experienced discrimination in science and technology, and they have now supported each other to make this moment that you're about to witness happen. Both of them have received death threats as a result of bringing the Afghan Girl Robotics team to this event here in Amsterdam. As you may be aware, we've been talking about Sarah's background, which is in trauma and first response, and she's currently an ambassador for Royal Marlton Hospital in the UK and founder of Inspired Minds and WSAI. Roya was the first female CEO in Afghanistan and is the CEO of the Digital Citizen Fund, a nonprofit organization that helps girls and women in developing countries gain access to technology and also to obtain necessary skills to succeed in today's expanding global market. They are two very special, unique women that have both achieved massive feats in their own industries. Please welcome for this special session, Sarah and Roya. To start this session off, I think um, I want to say how humbled I am to be in your presence. Um, yep. It's a great privilege to have you and the team here, and um, you really are an inspiration for women worldwide with what you've achieved in technology. Um, but what I'm really interested in is, I mean, I've, I've experienced discrimination as a woman in science and tech, but growing up as a, a young girl in Afghanistan, what is it that actually inspired you to do all these great achievements that, that you've done? First of all, I would like to say that uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and it's really a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you very much, Sarah, for giving us uh, this stage and our opportunity. Um, I want to say that uh, I was started as a shy and very curious girl in Afghanistan. But as many of you know, millions of the girls in Afghanistan, like me, giving a few opportunities to imagine anything but serving the life for husband and the house. And uh, they have to stay at home, and they have to only talk with their close relatives. They only know one reality. I was lucky enough to find a way around of this. As a child, I hear that there is a box that you can talk with the people, you have a conversation with them, and they wouldn't care that who you were or you are a girl. I also hear that this magic box has thousands of the books and any information that you want, and you can find an answer to all the questions that you have. And it's called computer. At the age of 16, I had an opportunity to try it by myself when a, when a friend of mine asked me to go to only intern cafe in Harad. And we went there, and we were the only woman there. And after the first time I used the internet, um, I realized that there are more than odd than what was around of me. And right then, I made it mind to make somehow technology the center of my career. I went to the schools, graduated from computer science, and I started my own first uh, uh, company and it became one of the first like, female CEOs in Afghanistan. But I also feel that there are millions of the girls who are out, they're just like me. They are curious but giving another vision to explore the world and I wanted to share the success that I was uh, when I was younger that I realized it, so I started to show some fun. Okay. So I mean that's an incredible story. So cer certainly as soon as we announced that I was um, working with you to bring the, the team over here, I um, straight away received a number of death threats via Twitter. Um, I received a letter to my home um, threatening me and my life. But this is something that you've experienced throughout your life. For me, this has just been a very short period of time. So how have you managed to cope with that and deal with that? And well, um, as you, we talked the other days, um, well, as being a tech female CEO, anywhere in the world will introduce you some obstacles, but Afghanistan, a place that the women are not supposed to work outside, 
the attack against of me was devastating, both personally and professionally. I was, at the beginning, it was very hard to work with the men because I didn't want to work with the women. They often refused to pay for the job that we did. They started to put in a spy and as well follow us and send in their threats to us. But I, f I feel sometimes it's too much. But, but if I was quit the job, what was a uh, message I could send to other girls who want to uh, pursue the career that I want, the event, like technology? So I used the technology to become as a digital citizen, as a digital entrepreneur. And, um, and this way, we could continue the wars that we love. So we know that um, inequality still certainly exists right now. And we've talked over the last couple of days about how we see a lack of inclusion, particularly in biases in artificial intelligence. But the team that, are, um, coming, that have actually come here today, how do, we, how do we support women like that in Afghanistan? How do we support children more in Afghanistan to be able to come into technology and science and to have an education? Well, I think that technology and education are unlocking the global citizenship for many of the young girls in developing countries like Afghanistan. And we, we have to give them an opportunity that they can uh, pursue the dreams that they want. And one of the things that right now we are working on that is to build in the first school of technology, engineering, maths, and innovation in Afghanistan. We call it MIT of Afghanistan. MIT for Afghanistan. Yes. I like that. I think we can support that, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We, two weeks ago, we had an uh, opportunity to pitch this idea to the solve challenges of MIT, and we are the, we, one of the leaders. And uh, this technology center is that is going to be supported by President Rani and also First Lady. And um, it's, a, it's a, actually, it's the first step was the Afghan robotic team that they bring the totally change and impact in my society. And uh, they changed the view of our young uh, the leaders in, uh, in Afghanistan that they have to use the potential of the youths in development and uh, science and technology. Mm -hmm. We wanted to have the next leader of the young uh, scientists, technologists, and engineers. And it's that to have the, the kids that they, their minds be only in the war and terrorism. So um, we, we don't know what would be the potential in the minds of each of these young kids and uh, young women. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer to the poverty, slavery, and violence is the mind of each kid that they can't realize the, the power of the dream of uh, realization of your power, uh, the dream. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we have one of the most um, influential communities here in, in technology. Um, what can we all do to support you to make that happen? Well, we are looking for, uh, for funding, a sponsor and partner. Sorry, that, did you hear that? We're looking for funding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I hope that uh, here I can meet with the people who are interested to supporting us and supporting the next generation of the uh, women, young women and young boys in Afghanistan. Amazing. And just out of interest, what will happen to those young women and boys if they don't actually go into an education in technology? We talked very before very briefly about the fact that if they don't have this to inspire them, they can end up being encouraged to go into... Uh, well, uh, the unfortunately, when you're living in a very conservative area, like Afghanistan, many of these young kids, they don't, um, they don't have the power, they don't know what's going on in the world. They only know one reality that was introduced by their families and community and society. And you, unfortunately, the conservative leaders take advantage of that. They're trying to restrict the information because it's a way for them that they can power, they can keep the power and keep them and bring them to the madras and bring wash their minds. And they, they use them for their own agenda. So it's a time for us that we're thinking about the younger generation and allow them to be more creative and have access to technology because technology gives us um, po po uh, to different realities mm -hmm. and as well a uh, possibility of the, uh, to dream further. Yeah. And, um, and also allow them to be more creative and more critical about the stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's why it's very important that uh, we try to um, help the younger kids to, um, to be more creative and use their imagination and as well have access to technology and education. Okay, so um, obviously we're going to welcome to the stage very shortly the all-girl Afghan robotics team who were, uh, um, the reason we were here is they originally re refused the visa to the States um, but now we're delighted to have them here and they're going to be coming up on the stage shortly. Can you just give us a quick overview of the background of the team and who they are? Sure. I mean, first of all, thank you, Sarah. I remember that when the visa was denied and the first person who reached out to me and says that we will give a stage to your girls, it was Sarah, so I really appreciate it. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you for that. Um, the girls are a team of the six, six girls right now. Um, Lida Azizi, Fatima Qadrian, Sumay uh, Faruqi, and as well we have uh, Sahar Barakzai, and we have Ruda Benuri. They're six girls. But I have to also say that these girls are the symbol of the hope, happiness, and unity in my uh, country. They bring the sense of pride for the Afghan community that after centuries that they ignored the woman's ability in science technology, right now they are proud of these girls. Yeah. They are also a symbol of the progress in Afghanistan. And if they will be in this kind of the stage, they will show that if we're giving the tools, the right tools and equal access uh, to the women and the girls anywhere in the world, they can pursue their dreams. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, from my perspective and certainly on behalf of Inspired Minds, there's three words that springs to mind when I think about this team and it's courageous, brave, and, and pure inspiration for women around the world. So I think on that note, we should welcome and introduce the all-girl Afghan robotics team to the stage, and I'm really excited for this moment. So. Thank you.